The show can't start until you jump. And today we are reading Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. Or we're talking about Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. And I'm so excited. Do you want to start? Um, sure. <laughs> I um, don't think we want to start with me. Why? <laughs> I did not like this book. Why not? Why didn't you like it? I I felt that her voice was different in this one. I didn't feel like there was... I mean, we giggled that, uh, you know, throughout it. Because, you know, we did this for our live stream. The characters were sort of unhinged. I f- honestly felt like Lachlan, or whatever his name is, was hardly on the page I if I felt like in the first one it was evenly balanced between Sloane and Rowan especially with like the killing and stuff but I didn't I didn't feel that vibe in this one I feel well like, sorry go no go ahead I feel like she was trying to I feel like everything came gracefully in the first one. Everything flowed really well. It was funny. Not that this one was forced, but like the pizza thing. Like, were you just doing that because the ice cream thing happened in the first one? Right? Because it wasn't as bad as the first one. So was it just thrown in there because that was like the recipe you had for the first one that was successful? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... Uh, I don't know. I just felt off kilter to me. Maybe there was too much hype or maybe I'm overthinking it. I think, I mean, for me, I really enjoyed it. And I I kind of think this is funny because I think you didn't enjoy it because it wasn't like Butcher and Blackbird. And that's why I loved it. Because you still had like the dark comedy you still had the unhinged characters Lachlan I wouldn't consider unhinged Lark is unhinged Leander is unhinged in like fun ways obviously Abe is just purely unhinged and I think that's what I loved about it it was a completely different story completely different setup completely different character development for both of them and it didn't feel like a repeat of Butcher and Blackbird, which is not what I wanted. Like, I wanted a different story. And I feel like she executed her, like, dark rom-com recipe without cloning the same story. My brain is trying to compute your logic this early in the morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be on the right right track, but I'm sorry, you cannot call him a contract killer and only have him kill one person, but he goes on all these calls for Leander and I just Well, he's a contract killer for Leander. Yeah, I know, but we never see it. Yeah, I was okay with never... that. Never oh okay. All right, Miss Light and Fluffy. <laughs> I mean, you know, the the whole, I think it would be difficult to argue how badly he wants to get out mm-hmm. of working for Leander if he is killing on the page for him. Because how would you write that scene? I think it would be really difficult to write a scene killing somebody for an employer knowing it's not what you want to do you know like I feel like there there's there would just be I think Bryn could do it but we already know he wants to retire I don't need like the inner dialogue of like man I'm sick to death of doing this as he walks up to the guy and she's like (laughs) (laughs) like I don't need that (laughs) okay 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 I think him I think where Bryn made Lachlan unhinged and like 
he's obviously a killer is where he delivers the um ashbourne guy i can't remember his title to lark and is like hey happy sleep retreat weekend you want to kill somebody with me (laughs) that was super cute you know so like it's it's i think brent did a really good job of uh, in my opinion, like navigating that. I could completely understand the argument, like he's a contract killer. We're used to a lot of killing on the page Mm -hmm. from Butcher and Blackbird. And there wasn't a lot of that in this book. And I was totally okay with that. I love it. I'm glad. I mean, the storyline was still good. I still enjoyed the story. Like I liked that. I did not... Like the phantom thing, that connection of who he is and why he's doing this. And then the whole religious thing like that was just blah. I knew you wouldn't. Yeah. As soon as like it just came out, I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Like, I think our theories were like, <laughs> like we were like, who is he? Why is he doing this? Like, we thought he was that, that person in the woods who's been killing for like, no, no, it's not. That I'm going to give to you because I, and here's, it was, I was almost half expecting in like the epilogue or at some point towards the end for our original person from Butcher and Blackbird Mm -hmm. to pop back up, like give a overview of the events and be like, you know, like, you know, because because I when you go from someone who's nameless to giving them a name and I'm like, hmm, maybe it's not the same person. Mm-hmm. So I find it interesting. Like if she wanted to start, if she wanted to bring the person at the end of Butcher and Blackbird up at the beginning of the next book, that wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Because I, I, I think she set it up. And I I don't know if she did it intentionally or not, but I think she set it up that she could totally get away with it because I agree. I think Abe was... A fall guy being Harvey's brother. Kind kind of. You know, like, you're telling... Like, it just... I mean, she did a, a good job of, like, having Abe explain why he was able to figure it out instead of the officials because the officials were like, you killed a serial killer. Like, we don't really care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the guy was nuts, clearly. <laughs> you know, so I could see the officials, like, turning a, a blind eye to that case when there's so many other cases that are going to take priority. Mm-hmm. And Abe taking the time to go and put it all together. But, like, the items that he mentioned, I couldn't figure out how he figured out who they were. Well, yeah, because, I mean, in Butcher and Blackbird, they don't touch him. He literally dies of, like, a heart attack because he was scared to death. So there's no imp- – there's nothing to trace them back to. Impl- they yeah. didn't stab him. They didn't hit him. I mean, well, didn't Rowan, like, punch him or something or knocked him down to the ground? But, I mean, other than that, though. I think so paramedics or whatever probably thought he died of a heart attack because that's what he did die there's no there's nothing exterior or anything so well i'm sure they left his mom's corpse with him i mean maybe like he was how... dancing with her taking her outside to like bury her finally or something i mean that's fair that's a good point i think I mean, abe mentioned okay, something like me, he let, was no, no no let's just let's just pause for a second <laughs> Let's imagine that you're an FBI agent and you come onto this scene, okay, and you see a guy with the bones that you eventually find out are his mom that are either on top of him or next to him. The first thing that comes into your mind is not, well, now it is, but before Bludgeon and Backbird, the thought in your mind is not going to be, oh, some serial killer brought those out here to, like, terrorize him and dance on top of his skin. Well, right, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The first question is like, why the fuck are there some skeleton bones on top of this motherfucker? And like, what crazy shit was he doing, right? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, that's certainly true. So, yeah, it didn't make sense. I honestly, I feel like it was like, I was hoping for a decoy. 
because I never once made that connection until it was told on the page, right? I never, never in the first book did we know that he had siblings. So there was nothing to reference to, oh, maybe this person is connected to Harvey. Right. Like, so, yeah, I did not like that. I did not like that part. And I still don't know what happened to him. Did he run away? Who? Abe. Abe? Yeah. No, he died. Where? It doesn't say on the page. Yeah, it does. Who killed him? Rose, I think. There's commotion and people show up and then we hear it fi- says we hear shots being fired, but nothing. Yeah, it says that he has um, a hole in the middle of his forehead with blank eyes and a pool really? of blood. Yeah. I read it twice trying to figure out what the fuck happened. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't have my copy right next to me. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at it again because I don't remember that ever happening. I just know that fo- shots were fired and then everything goes crazy. Yeah. And honestly, this is gonna sound really horrible, but I know that he has feelings for Lark. But who? L- Lachlan? Yeah. At the okay. end where he gives the ultimatum and he picks Lark over his brother, I was surprised. I mean, I know it's supposed to happen. But I didn't feel the conviction of his feelings for her throughout the book enough to be like, oh, I'm going to sacrifice my brother for you. He didn't, though. I know. I mean, he's like, don't ever make me pick you. And my brother is always going to be you. And I'm like, really, dude? Where did that come from? Hmm. Yeah. I'm... An alarm goes off. It all happens so fast. Just not fast enough. Oh, there it is. I read this motherfucker twice and I couldn't find that. (laughs) It's one sentence. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. I stand corrected. Whatever. I just... No idea what happened there. Any particular favorite scenes that stood out the most? Hmm. Yeah. Good question. I don't have... Oh, I loved the stage scene. Oh, yeah. Where that was so good. I really liked that one. I liked the banter between Lachlan and and Sloan. Yeah. Yeah, that was good, too. He's like, I can't hear you. And she goes and gets the bottle of whiskey. He's like, can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I really like the stage scene. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, there. Like- oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I liked the beginning all the way up till the balcony scene before it jumped time again. I, I loved all that. I felt like that felt like classic Bryn to me. I felt like we were on to something. And then then just the part at the wedding. So I guess that beginning part. But then after that, like it didn't. I don't know. Hmm. I didn't. Yeah. Does it surprise you that I didn't like it? Or did you feel that? I mean, I didn't come into today's episode thinking you didn't like it. I probably would have picked up on it if I hadn't had like such an insane weekend. Mm -hmm. And knowing you and knowing the story, I could see why you wouldn't like it. So not really surprised. I I would have been less surprised if I'd been able to pay closer attention this weekend. (laughs) Which I'm grateful wasn't for. It was. No. Obvious of joy as you were reading it. No. Oh, I can't wait for you to get to this part. Oh. oh right. Yeah. Oh, none of that. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm. Yeah. I did. I really. Um, I kind of liked the. That. Lark. Like, had that issue with the small spaces. And it wasn't... I thought, like, something had happened at Ashbourne 
in conjunction with the assault that she was subjugated to. But I kind of liked that her backstory gave more insight to that rather than, because I feel like, yeah, like I feel like Brynn like really did a good job of flushing out her full character because like she could have done something in Ashbourne to have triggered you know, those, the, that claustrophobia and panic. But I liked that it actually came from a different time in her life. Mm-hmm. Multiple traumas. Mm-hmm. Well, coming off of book one, we talked about we were hopefully get the full backstory. Do you feel like we got the full backstory of Lark and what happened at the school? I mean, I was kind of hoping, you know, I mean, I don't need like the details of what happened to her. But I would have liked more clarity on the events of like, okay, Sloane is like obviously reaching out to the head of the school. She's not getting anywhere. Does she see something that happens? And that's when she kills the professor. Like, how did she kill the professor? Was Lark there? Like, all of those questions didn't get answered. And I definitely would have preferred to get those questions answered because it was talked about so much in book one. So the short answer is no, I don't feel like that was fully fleshed out. And I think there was enough room in this book that you could have done that. And I don't know, like, and I, I don't know if we would, will ever get the, those answers because I'm assuming the next book is going to be about Fion. Mm-hmm, and Rose. Yeah. Hopefully. Um. Yeah. I read the blurb. Oh, it is? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pretty sure it is about her. Now, whether or not she, like, is there through the whole book, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, it says circus performer Rose meets lonely town boy Dr. Finn. After a night of murderous adventure goes awry. I think that's how you say it. I don't really think that. I don't know. I what I was comparing okay obviously I was comparing the second book to the first one as one does when reading a series especially a new author when the first book is amazing and yes I understand that because the first book was amazing that there's high standards for the second book because this is the first series that she's written on her own right because I know she does a lot of co-writing or has she written something else on her own before this Mm, I don't know for sure okay i don't know either but i would not call this i mean there's killing in the beginning obviously and i say killing with like quotations because like running somebody off the road i mean yeah that's that's killing somebody but like you just kind of stood and watched as this card filled with water. I don't know. It's a very touchy subject. It's a very thin line to, to say, but besides the, the one for the retreat, there's nothing in the chunk of the middle. Am I right? Mm, I'm trying to think. He does the torture station session with Leander, but that's at the beginning. Then you have the sleep well, retreat. Well, the and I don't yeah. think there's anything after the sleep retreat. And then Lark kills that one guy with fireworks. And that was at the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning. So it's like she put all the what would make it dark and violent at the beginning, and then besides the end, like the rest of it could be freaking contemporary romance. I think that was my problem with it as we're talking about it and diving into it even more. Yeah. I essentially read a contemporary. Anywho. I don't think I have anything else. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can go on and on and on and we will continue to talk about this series. And then what do we even have a release date for book three? It just says January, 2025. Oh, I can't find, I can't find anything on it. Oh, here. I'm on Goodreads. I will put the link in the chat for you, my lady. My lady. Have you seen the cover? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, the cover's there, too. 
And I'm pretty sure on her Facebook group. Aww. She did like a couple of sneak peeks of the third one too. I didn't read them though. She wrote Cute. She- well, I would say Rose lives then. Yeah. It'll be, I wonder if Circus Bonus, well, I mean, I guess technically it looks like we're going back in time with this book. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to cover the span of book one and two. Mm -hmm. And at some point it's going to meet where book two ends and then carries on. Yeah, kind of like what Leather and Lark did. Like they they went back a little mm-hmm. before jumping a year after book one. Yeah. No say. I don't know. Are you ready to rate my beautiful and lovely, creative, logical, light and fluffy co-host? <laughs> yes. Okay. Shall we start with the darkness? Shall we start with the darkness? Sure. I'd say two. Maybe a three. The darkness felt like yeah, I, I mean, read in like any other mafia book. Like, honestly. Like, there was nothing besides a little bit of creativity that Lark has with the fireworks and then the resin. Like. Yeah, I would say a three. I mean, I still think you have enough, like, killing on page that yeah a three i'd be okay i'd be good with a three let me look at something okay do you think this one had more killing more violence or more darkness than the first one or than the the first one yeah than the first one sorry no no it definitely did not hold on i gotta read this stuff Two is includes intense or con- conflicted but general balance of lighter elements. Themes maybe touch on taboo topics or unconventional relationships. I'm gonna go with a two. Cause on the new scale we gave Butcher and Blackbird a three point five. We did? Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay. Okay, spice. one no i'd say you have to have at least a two they got pretty kinky like once their spicy scene started scenes there's like two there's at least three when they kiss on the balcony i don't count that one okay then (laughs) then there's the the only kinky scene is the the stage the stage the bathroom i feel like there is at least i mean making out in a bathroom is not really there was a way more that happened than making out in the bathroom okay fine okay so fine the stage and the bathroom nothing else and then the i mean i guess if you didn't want to count the bonus chapter you wouldn't have to but the bonus chapter was fantastic. Were they on the beach? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. It was really good. So you give it a two for spicy? I'll give it a two for spicy. I don't think yeah. I'm higher than a two. Yeah. Okay, overall? I would say a... Oh, this is... I'm struggling... I'm gonna say a three and a half. That's lower than I thought you were gonna give it. I was I was really edging to four, but it would be a four for me because I liked how different she did this book. However, I can see where if somebody absolutely loved Butcher and Blackbird and went into Leather and Lark expecting the same thing, that they would be disappointed. Okay, so before I give my rating, I want to ask one question I forgot to ask earlier. Do you think that it felt different because now it went from indie published to traditionally published? Traditionally published? Because I feel like that's a significant reason why it feels different. No, I think 
I think this is how the story would have happened regardless. This might be the way the story might have happened regardless, but the dark elements and maybe other things could have been done differently. Because mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, we both don't feel like it was as dark as the first one. It's not nor. It is unlikely to go so dark in the first one and then tether off to be lighter. Normally it goes the opposite way. You always go darker. You don't go, you don't start dark and then go light. Anyhow, that's just my thought. I give it a three. Only because I think if people re- read the first one, I mean, it's still a good story. But it's, it's, it's packaged to trick you. You get a little bit oh, of the darkness. I don't agree with that at you, all. You get the darkness at the beginning, nothing in the middle, and you get a little bit of darkness at the end, right? So, like the pa- the outside has you fooled. I mean, there it's a good I mean, mystery that is happening. There's like two mysteries that are happening at the same time. So I will give it yeah. kudos for that. I did enjoy that aspect of it. It wasn't just there for no reason. Like there's a there's a reason why everything is happening. And, and Bryn does a really good job of telling a good story. Like, that's not the problem. Like, it is a good right. story in and of itself. Yeah. I just think I my expectations were either too high or different than what I got. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully which now is fair. Ho- hopefully now it will balance out as we go into book three. Yeah, I'm interested to see. I'm definitely interested to see where we go with Rose and Fionn's story. Because I wouldn't mind things being more unhinged. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes. Like, yeah, I, I would think- love to see. I'm I'm really excited to see Fionn's character like really fleshed out and kind of see why he's so quiet. And I think we get a little bit of backstory with that with book two. Yeah, I would like to see Fionn lose his cool a bit. It is definitely going to be interesting. I do think, though, that Bryn did the smart thing of starting with Rowan and making it all crazy. Because I feel like if she would have started with Leather and Lark as the first book, you would have a hard time getting me to read a second book. Yeah, I mean, I think think Butcher and Blackbird, it's just, it's in its own category Mm -hmm. like it did something that's never been done before you know and I think but but again it goes back to what I've already said I feel like we had the same elements with a completely different story and that's why I don't want to read like and I love these authors but like Tessa Bailey writes the same exact story with different characters Heather mm-hmm. Graham, same exact story with different characters. You know, if I'm if I want to, and there's certainly a time and place for that. I've read a ton of Tessa Bailey. I've read a ton of Heather Graham. I've read a ton of Lucy Score. But I enjoyed getting to read something by an author that I absolutely loved, and I mean, it not being predictable. You know, it it was I wasn't able to figure oh well you know this is where they'll rescue each other or this is when this will happen or you know whatever I liked that there was no uh, like it wasn't set up the same yeah no I give you credit for that that is true you're the brains of the operation Jen (laughs) all right if you have read Butcher and Blackbird and Leather and Lark Whose side are you on? Are you going to take Misty's side and say it was a bit of a disappointment because it wasn't set up the same? Or are you on my side where you enjoyed a new story by this incredible author? And she's an incredible author no matter which way you slice it. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Tag us on Instagram stories at Bones of the Story. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on the journey into the shadows of love, where dark romance stories come to light. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Bones of the Story as much as we did. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Your feedback means the world to us. 
And to stay updated on all things dark romance, follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. Share your thoughts, ideas, or even your own dark romance stories with us. Drop us a line at bonesofthestory at gmail.com. Remember, our next tantalizing episode is just around the corner, so keep your hearts open and your senses sharp. Until then, embrace the darkness and let the stories continue to stir your deepest desires. This is Misty and Jen signing signing off from from Bones Bones of the Story. Story.